All right, now what I'm going to talk about is the type of controller is called a PID. P I D, which stands for proportional integral. and derivative. So what this is now uh, allows me to make some changes and look at how this thing, um, the speed, um, what this does for me is allows me to make changes to the motor position based on the distance that it has to move. Now, specifically, I am not doing derivative. Uh, mine is a PI controller, which is proportional and integral with a speed control element involved with it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how this works. Start with proportional. The proportional portion of this is where I'm looking at a value, which is my error value which is equal to my actual position minus my desired position. So that gives me the proportional portion of it. Now what that means is this value can be from very small anywhere from you know, whatever you want. Now my actual position is and desired positions are actually ADC values uh, so they range anywhere from 0 through 4096 for the controller I'm using. So this gives me the range at which the system will run as far as speed. What I'm going to do now is take this error value and put it into some code. Alright, now here is the beginning of the code. This is very basic and just the very start of it. Here I'm saying now the calculated error, which is the difference between your actual and desired position from the ADC. If it's less than, if it's greater than 3, a value of 3, and less than 10, which means it's very close, I want the speed to be this value. This value is actually corresponds to a pulse width modulation input. Now I'm using the parallax HB25s which um, a value of 1500 is stop and a value of 1000 is full speed one direction and 2000 would be full speed the other direction. In this case the value would be relatively close to the 1500 because I want it to move slow because look how close I am at this point. I'm almost at where I need to be. So now the reason I start with 3 is because the values between 3 and negative 3 are now the dead band. The dead band being the area where the motor is close enough to the value that I want it to stop. So anyway, if that value error value is greater than Three, uh, 3 to 10 and then goes and looks at 11 to 20 and now it's got a greater error therefore I want it to go faster to get to that spot. Now this is a loop so this is continually tracking what that error value is and as it gets closer when it gets into this range it'll automatically slow down to that lower speed. The idea is to prevent an overshoot and this works remarkably well this code actually continues all the way up through uh, error greater than 100 at greater than 100 is when the system automatically starts up at full speed. Now the only problem with running jumping directly into full speed is that you get a lot of jerk. Basically inertia of the motor is going to jerk the leg very rapidly so consequently there is some code in there to change the speed in a gradual manner. Alright, during experimentation I did find that the position of the leg on this axis and the ADC value when I plotted these were very 
much very close to being a very linear and I go with that premise of assuming it's a linear value so if I say the position a minimum position for say the femur is 30 degrees so we're going to calculate that it was 30 degrees which corresponds to a specific ADC value say the maximum now is somewhere up here so about 150 degrees which corresponds to its own ADC value there. What I do at this point is, because this is a linear line, I can calculate the slope of this <coughs> taking rise over run. So I can take the ADC value, maximum minus the minimum, that will uh, subtract those two, and then divide it by the degrees, 150 degrees divide, uh, subtract it, um, minus 30 degrees. So that will give me a value which is the slope of this. Now for me to calculate any specific position along here, say I want to go to um, 90 degrees on here, what I'd have now is here's this ADC value. I then take and multiply the slope times the difference between 90 to 30, which would be 60 degrees that it's going to move. So multiply that by the slope and then add it on to the, um, this ADC value here. This gives me the actual ADC value I need to shoot for. So this uh, makes a relatively easy way to correspond an ADC value to the position.